Hello fellow LEGO lovers, Cameron Schreiner here and welcome back to Love Bam, LEGO Basics and More. In today's video, we're going over the ultrasonic sensor. We're going over how it looks and some key points on how it functions. So go ahead and grab a robot with those Wally looking eyes and let's get started. All right, so in your kit, you should have one of these. This is your standard Lego ultrasonic sensor. It's got that three hole connection beam on the bottom its cord slot is in the back and in the front is what a lot of people like to call the Wally eyes so all this is is this is two high frequency transmitter and receivers that will collect a high frequency sound so go ahead and grab one of these and mount it on your robot and let's talk a little bit how this functions how the ultrasonic sensor works okay to help us understand how the ultrasonic sensor works, I'm going to be using paint to draw you guys a little example. So ultrasonic means high frequency sound. So what this does is the ultrasonic sensor emits a really high pitched sound that's above human hearing to judge distance. Now there's an animal in real life that does this all the time. It's through a process called echolocation and that's what bats use to find insects in the dark. So let's get ourselves a little bat here. Give him some ears, wings, body. All right, so we have ourselves a little bat. And what this guy does is this little bat will screech really, really loud. And uh, let's get ourselves a little bug. And way over here in the distance is going to be his prey, this fly. And what's going to happen is the bat is going to screech at really, really high frequency. And these sound waves are going to go out into the world and they're going to keep traveling until they hit something. So bam, this sound wave has now hit the fly. So then what's going to happen is the sound is going to bounce off the fly and head back towards the bat, like so. And then eventually it'll reach the bat's ears, just like that. And the time it took this sound wave to go from the bat to the fly and back will tell the bat how far away this fly is and also where it is in space. So it doesn't just do this once, though. It does this hundreds of times in a second or two because there's more than one sound wave that the bat can produce. So another way to think of this is let's look inside of a bat's mind. So right now the bat has not screeched so everything is black. The bat then screeches and one of the sound waves bounces off of something and creates a dot. And then the next sound wave comes back, bounces off and actually tells the bat that there's something else here. And this happens over and over and over again in a matter of seconds and it creates this 3D image inside the bat's mind. Now I'm only showing you 2D, but it does the same thing in the third dimension. And eventually when all of these sound waves have come back, the bat now has not only a picture of the fly, but it would also get like a little digital wave of some trees that are in the background or maybe some rocks and grass that are over here. So it gets a whole digital picture of what's around it in its mind. Now, our ultrasonic sensor is not as complicated as this, but it uses a very similar process. <clears throat> so what it does is we have our ultrasonic sensor here. It's got the Wally eyes in front. It has two of these little ports. So this is a side view. And what happens is 
let's say we're trying to find the wall, the game piece wall, if for competition. What this does is the ultrasonic sensor will once again make a high frequency sound that we can't hear and it will exit one of those side ports and it'll keep going until it hits the wall and then it'll bounce off the wall and head back just like the fly except instead of giving, getting like a 2D or 3D image the only thing our ultrasonic sensor can do is judge how long this took and give us a number back based on how far away the wall is. So let's go back to the sensor and look at some different ways and limitations to why this can be useful and also why it can hurt you. It's time to go into the wild and see the ultrasonic sensor in its natural habitat. So let's take a look about how the sensor is mounted originally. If you built the standard golf bot that comes from the kit, the ultrasonic sensor is mounted on the back top of the robot. Now this looks convenient because it's nice and level and comes off the very top of the robot, but if you're trying to sense a game piece that's really short, this can be an issue. This ultrasonic sensor, the sound waves that come out, are going to go straight over this little dog. Actually in the golf bot form, this position has a chance of going straight over the competition wall for the field mat as well. So what you need to do is you have to think about what you're using the ultrasonic sensor to see to judge the distance of something. If it's too short you may have to mount your sensor somewhere else. So if I were to mount the sensor on the bottom instead, now when the ultrasonic sensor is going along the sound waves are going to be able to bounce off this dog and come back at the right height. But also another issue with the ultrasonic sensor is that since one of these ports emits the high frequency sound and the other one receives it, it can have trouble seeing something or judging a distance if it's at an extreme angle. So let's say I'm coming in the dog I'm coming at the dog from like 45 degrees or more. When one of these ports emits the sound, it'll bounce off the dog and it has a chance of missing the receiving sensor. So either the ultrasonic sensor will give you an inaccurate reading or it may not even see the dog at all. It also has trouble seeing itself when it gets too close to the game piece. The sound waves bounce back before it can even reach the sensor. They'll hit like the center. So if you're too close or at too extreme of an angle, the ultrasonic sensor sometimes can't see your object. So if you're going to use this in competition, you just need to be careful and think about the proper placement of where your sensor needs to be on your robot, but also what you're trying to find the distance of. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. On the next episode of LaBam, we're going to go over how to program the ultrasonic sensor. I'm going to give you a basic code to help you figure out exactly how this thing can work on the computer. So I'll see you next time. Ultrasonic, DJ, 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 DJ,